the next criteria on which we are going to classify that is on the basis of shape of the cusp of cusp cusp is the upper part of the tooth which is visible on the basis of its surface here we can again classify it on the basis of this into four categories first is known as buno don't then second sino don't and third seleno don't and fourth lofo don't these are the four categories now let us see the shape of the cusp buno don't the cusps are blunt that means if the surface like if we draw the tooth the upper surface would have this kind of blunt area it's not very pointed and the example here do you know don't the example humans if we move our tongue on the molars and premolars we find that there are ridges there are bulges but those are smooth blunt they are not pointed and such blunt cusped teeth are called buonodont now the purpose is that if one tooth has a bulge like this the lower on which this tooth is going to come and rest should have a depression so that when we are chewing something the bulge of one fits actually into the depression of the other tooth so if this is one say this is the lower one the upper one would fit into this so that grinding can take place properly sinodont these teeth they are having pointy surface let me draw it here and write they are pointy and sharp if we see this the upper surface of the tooth would have these kind of pointed structures and they are found in carnivores selenodont the teeth are or the cusp are crescent shaped that means if this is the surface upper surface of tooth then the cu the cusp has this kind of half moon like shape that is crescent shape crescent shape half moon like and this is found in grazing animals in grazing animals and lophodont lophodont they have long ridges like we see on the roads there are speed breakers so if this is the tooth then on the tooth there would be these kind of structures this is visible from the side but if we see the entire surface maybe then there would be these kind of depression so there is one bulge then again a depression again a bulge again a depression so they have ridges such teeth are called lophodont and it they are found in elephants out of this we come in the category of buonodont now the classification which we saw earlier was on the basis of sex and the shape in that we have diphyodont and we have different shapes so heterodont this is the next category that is on the basis of the shape of the cusp the fourth classification is on the basis of attachment that means how these teeth are attached to the bone the bone to which these teeth are attached these bones if it is upper jaw we'll call it maxillary bone or maxilla and if it is the lower jaw then we'll call it mandible but there are sockets in these bones and these sockets are known as alveoli so the bones in which these teeth are placed they are called alveolar bones and they can be 
maxilla or mandible depending upon if we are talking of upper or lower jaw. Now attachment wise, the first attachment is called acrodont. In acrodont arrangement, if this is the bone to which or on which these teeth are attached, the attachment is just superficial. That means the teeth are simply placed over this bone. So this is the bone that we have drawn and these are the teeth. That means if this is the surface of the bone, the tooth is simply placed like this, just attached like this. And that is why they fall off very easily. That means this type of attachment is seen in case of amphibians and fishes. If you are able to recall, we said amphibians and fishes, they have polypyodont dentition. That means as many a times the teeth fall off and every time the new sets appear. Reason the attachment is very loose. So we write it as super Superficially attached. The second classification on the basis of attachment, these are known as pleurodont. Pleurodont, again, there would be a bone and the bone has such kind of sockets. These sockets are known as alveoli and so we call this bone the alveolar bone. The teeth are attached. Partially, here we are showing one tooth and it is attached in this socket only partially. That means it is loose from the other side. Attached on one side only. That means attachment is not very tight and this is seen example in reptiles. Not all reptiles. Reptiles excluding crocodiles and alligators because they would come in the third category. Here the example would be fishes and amphibians. The third type of attachment is known as thecodont. And in this again the alveolar bone that is the bone in which the teeth are attached would have sockets and these sockets are known as the alveoli. In thecodon dentition the tooth is properly attached in the socket and that is why the attachment is very strong. So this is deeply placed in the socket and the example is humans and Amongst reptiles, this is reported in crocodiles. Crocodiles and alligators. So when we write pleurodon, we write reptiles except crocodiles and alligators because they show thecodont dentition. And as we come in this category, so this is one category that we have to remember. Here we are bunodont. Sorry, this is secodont. So, in this categories, we have classified basically four types or on four criteria we have classified this dentition. If we have to sum up the human dentition, then the four terms which we are going to use, one is diphyodonts. That means we have two sets or we get two sets of teeth in our lifetime. The types of teeth are different. So heterodonts. On the basis of shape of the cusp, we are bunodont. And fourth, on the basis of attachment, we come in the category of thecodont. So these four things are for explaining what kind of dentition is found in human beings. One more term which we will be discussing here, that term is known as diastema. Diastema is actually a gap 
gap between teeth. To understand this, let us take the example of a herbivore like uh, a rabbit. In rabbit, incisors are very, very well developed because they use or they cut their food. So these cutting teeth are very well developed. They are herbivores. That means they are feeding on plant, fruits, roots or these kind of structures. They do not eat meat and that is why canines are absent. So incisors, no canines and then premolars and molars. That means there is a gap between incisors and canines. That gap or such kind of gaps between different types of teeth is known as diastema. So in case of rabbit, that diastema is present between incisors and premolars as they do not have canines. So here we have discussed the terms which we use in, uh, in case of a reference to teeth various types on the basis of number of sets or attachment or the shapes and all. Now in the next video we will discuss the structure of the tooth.